All right, welcome to uh, uh, Microcap Explosions. This is Mario Skonechny. I have a special guest today, Chris from Strongman Personal Finance. Chris, what's going on? Not much, man. How are you? Good. So I've been watching some of your videos. Uh, you're becoming one of my favorite YouTubers out there because you don't give a shit. and You say it how it is, <laughs> and I like that. So, uh, and your channel is growing quite nicely now. I can see that. Uh, so I want to like... I want to, you know, uh, get to know people with, uh, you know, that are actually helping properly people. I have the right message. Uh, so I, you know, if I can in any way help you grow, expose you a little bit, I want to do that. So uh, let's start with this. Uh, let's talk about Tesla. You, you, you had some, you had some uh, videos on Tesla. Uh, you, you, you said the Tesla is like the last pin, last thing that is holding on to some of these uh, Kathy Woods followers. Just, you know, take, take it from here. Yeah, so just a little bit of backstory about me. So I, I'm an index fund investor. I literally just buy total world index funds in tax advantage accounts every two weeks. I don't really pick up. I mean, I, I have a couple individual stocks like Alibaba, but I'm not a huge individual stock investor. And what I noticed on YouTube before I made my channel is there's all these basically uneducated clowns that were all copying Kathy Wood. And as an accountant, because I do, a, I'm a CPA, I do accounting for my real job. I wish YouTube was my real job, but it's not. And I was just looking at some of these companies, looking at their financial statements, and they didn't make sense to me. You know, they're massively unprofitable, issuing shares. The only good thing about a lot of the companies that Kathy Wood was buying was they were exciting and futuristic, and some of them had decent revenue growth. So eventually it kind of inspired me to go on YouTube and kind of confront these, these clowns, basically. I mean, they are, they are freaking clowns because all they're doing is they're just parroting Kathy Wood, Kathy Wood, Woods, whatever. And as you know, all of her stocks are getting decimated except for one stock. And that is Tesla, which is holding up all of these YouTube clowns for now until it goes down. Did you see, did you see Teladoc today? Oh, uh, well, so I, I saw it. I saw it in the aftermarket yesterday. It was down what, 35, 40%. I don't know what happened during the day. I actually haven't checked it. What percentage did it go down? Uh, it was down as much as 48. And I think it finished 30 something. Uh, but I actually made a video on Teladoc as, as it was down like 48%. I mean, that's after being down. Like the stock is down like 90%, you know? And, and, it's, and it's just like you said, every single one that she has has been absolutely decimated except Tesla. And... And what, what I find amazing is that the people that have been talking about all of those stocks, growth stocks, innovation stocks, they still think that Tesla is going to 5,000. Like, <laughs> like, like, like she has like no credibility left anymore. What makes you think she's going to be right on Tesla is beyond me. Yeah, she's not right about Tesla. She's one of the people, I mean, you go watch all the YouTubers. She's just like the YouTubers. She picked one stock that did extremely well and it's still held up and that's you know kind of propping her up but what's going to happen is if you kind of see the trend every single one of her stocks was massively overvalued and every single one of her stocks has crashed massively and once tesla goes down i don't know what's going to be holding up her her arc etf i don't think there's any stock in that etf that's gone up because she's bought a bunch of like i said massively unprofitable companies she isn't looking at fundamentals She's buying a narrative. She's saying these companies are going to be the future. They're going to take over the world one day, and you have to buy them now. But what she's also not saying is a lot of these companies can go bankrupt because they're not making money. And all these people are starting to realize this after all her stocks are getting decimated. The one exception, of course, is Tesla. Yeah, so I saw one of your videos, and it was very interesting because you took out uh, um, you know, discounted cash flow analysis. And you plugged in a bunch of numbers and you, you, you can say that Tesla is worth whatever you want. Like whatever, whatever you want, you, you can uh, cherry pick the numbers and you can make it be worth whatever you want to, uh, to justify your narrative. Oh, 100%. I mean, with Tesla, what everybody's saying, and they're parroting Elon, is that Tesla's going to grow at 50%, their revenue, 50% every single year for the next X amount of years. If you put that into a model, which, you know, I have a very basic model. I don't claim to be a financial analyst. I just use some of my accounting knowledge to create that. And it's, you know, of course, there's probably better ways to analyze stocks. 
But if you punch that into my model and you grow their Tesla's current revenue by 50% every year, their revenue is going to be $450 billion in five years. But, I mean, how large is the luxury car market? It's probably about $450 billion now, and it's going to grow at roughly 5% over the next five years. So the model will tell you Tesla's revenue is going to grow to $450 billion. But that also assumes that Tesla is literally going to capture 60 to 70 percent of the entire luxury car market within five years, which to me doesn't make any sense. So it's interesting what you're saying, because you're using the word luxury market. I don't think I've heard that word from anybody else. Everybody else is talking about they're going to they're going to sell cars like Toyota or Honda. Yeah, so th that's what Elon is promising. But ever since I started looking at Tesla, I, I just didn't understand how that company was going to take over the world when their cheapest car is $47,000 roughly. And then you got to add taxes, titling, blah, 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 blah. So you're probably going to pay 50K. Now, I mean, I have a wife, I have a kid, soon I'm about to have a second kid. I went ahead and bought a van for about a third or half of that price. And my car payments, what, four or $500 a month? It's pretty significant. And that's half the price of what a Tesla would cost, their cheapest model. Now, if you're a family in the United States, how is the average family going to afford a Tesla? They're not going to buy a Model 3. That's the cheapest car. They're going to want to buy an SUV, which is their Model Y. That one's, what, 60 something thousand dollars The average person can't afford that. When you have a car price like that, that is clearly within the luxury car market, which is not as big as these people think it is. And I think Tesla is going to have a lot of trouble unless they can actually produce a car that the average family can't afford, which I don't see happening anytime soon. Yeah. So, um, I mean, obviously, obviously Tesla is growing right now. It's growing. I mean, I, I like, I like the car. Okay. I drove the car. It's a good, it's a good product. I don't own it, but you know, it, I like the car and it's growing. And a lot of times with these growth companies, what you have is kind of like what you see with, what happened with Zoom, what happened with Netflix, you know, Bill Ackman got Netflix, I <laughs> created a new verb. And it's because like, you see, during the COVID, I heard this, buy, buy Netflix because they're gonna, people are gonna stay home and they're gonna be signing up for Netflix. Two weeks later, buy Netflix because people are gonna stay home and get Netflix. Three weeks later, buy Netflix because people are gonna be staying home. And I was like, hold, hold on a second. How many times are you going to tell me the same thing? It's like it's like it's like okay, I'm I'm going out there and I'm buying a, a buying a house, okay, a uh, hundred thousand dollars, but it has a pool in the back, okay, hundred ten, but it has a pool in the back, but it has a pool in the back, okay, okay. How many times are you going to tell me it has a fucking pool in the back? Like, do you want me to pay you, you know, three hundred thousand dollars for that pool because you 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 told it to me fifty times? It's like at some point it's like. How much are you paying for that Netflix? How much are you paying for that Zoom for the same story that I like? I already understand people are staying home and are using these services. But at what point are you going to care? And that's what I see with Tesla right now. It's like, but it's growing. It's selling more cars. Like, OK, so what? You already told me this and you already told me this 100 times. And the market cap is one trillion dollars. At what point are you going to be like, uh, is this price even reasonable? Yeah, I mean, using your analogy the house you're basically paying a million dollars for a house that's worth one hundred thousand dollars at most and when you're buying tesla when you buy a share of tesla you have to think i'm buying the whole company how much am i paying for this entire company if you buy tesla at a thousand dollars you're roughly buying a company a, a luxury automaker for a trillion dollars now what elon musk is doing is he's playing this stupid little game he keeps saying oh we're going to grow at 50 percent and he keeps having these promises oh we're going to have robo taxis we're going to have uh, robots and whatever. He keeps stringing people along. And what's going to happen is Tesla will probably hit growth targets maybe over the next quarter, couple quarters. I mean, I, I, I can't say that with certainty. But there's going to come a point where Tesla cannot grow as fast as they have been. And I think their growth is going to drop off enormously because they cannot physically sell every car they make going forever into the future because people cannot afford them. There is a certain limit to what Tesla can do. And when that happens, there's going to be one quarter where they only grow it 20% year over year or 30%.
that is going to decimate that stock because people are finally going to realize, oh my God, this is just a luxury car company, just like you know BMW or you know Toyota, Lexus, whatever. I'm buying a luxury car company and I'm paying a trillion dollars for it. And the only promise is, is that one day there's going to be a robot, which, I mean, come on, <laughs> that's that's just a huge freaking joke to me. So I'll, I'll patiently wait. I'm not buying the stock. I don't plan to. And eventually, once that stock goes, there's going to be a big shakeup on YouTube. And I'm I'm really excited about that day. So we'll see. Yeah. So let's shift a little bit. Let's talk about Meet Kevin. So I saw you talking about Meet Kevin. And then the next thing I see, you guys are having a debate. How, how did this all come about? <laughs> I'm honestly surprised he came on my channel. I, I just... I started targeting Kevin because I was looking at what he was doing and he was basically pumping a lot of the stocks that Kathy Wood was, he was, you know, pumping a bunch of cryptos and I'm like, dude, most of these stocks are freaking trash. And a lot of the stocks that he recommended got freaking wrecked. And now he's pivoting to where he's still investing massively in Tesla. And I think what he's doing is extremely dangerous for his followers because they're, they're following his example. I mean, I know that not all of them are obviously, but a lot of people watch him. And they get the impression that they can crush the market and all they have to do is follow him, trade options, buy cryptos, whatever. And eventually what's going to happen is if they follow him into this massive investment in Tesla that he did, and what I say comes to fruition, they miss revenue one quarter, a lot of people are going to get freaking wrecked. Kevin will be fine. A lot of his fans will lose a lot of money and it won't be pretty. How many debates did you have with him? One, because you're having another one. I don't know if you already had it. Uh, so yeah, I had one maybe two months ago and we're having another one. It's actually this Sunday at noon on my channel and the second debate, we're just going to debate solely about Tesla. So I mean, we're not going to talk about, you know, his grifting or whatever he's doing. We're just going to talk specifically about Tesla. How, how did I, I didn't listen to the first debate. I just saw the thumbnail. How did the first debate go? Like, did you guys argue or did you have like a, a you know, a reasonable conversation? It was pretty reasonable. I mean, I, I don't hate him as a person. And, you know, he's actually, he's entertaining. And basically, I just asked him, and it wasn't even really a debate. It was more of like a very heated interview where I kind of asked him a bunch of harsh questions like, are you buying stocks before you pump them? Are you, how do you feel about, you know, telling all your fans to buy these massively unprofitable companies that are going to get destroyed? It was kind of like that. The next one is, we're just going to, it's actually going to be more of a debate. We're actually going to debate is Tesla overvalued or is it undervalued? Because that is sort of, that's the linchpin of his channel right now is Tesla. That's what's holding him up. Is he going forward? Is he going to be ever talking about stocks again? Uh, I don't know if the stock market craps out and Tesla dies. I mean, I'm sure he'll pivot to something because he has such a massive following. He's never going away. He could pivot back to real estate. He could find something else. I don't know what he would talk about, but I'm sure he could find something that he could continue to talk about on his channel. Right now, he's just kind of taking advantage of you know, the recent bull market we had and the massive popularity of Tesla. So I don't think he's going away, but his what he talks about may change pretty significantly. Yeah, okay. You have a new target. You're a new YouTuber you like a lot. <laughs> What's up with that? Why are you so hard on him? Jeremy Lefebvre, Jeremy Financial Education. He's a very, very special person. So Kevin, I've, you know, had issues with him. He has courses that he charges like $1,000 for, which I disagree with. I don't think you have to buy a course to, you know, have a nice retirement. I think you can just save diligently. Jeremy is basically the exact opposite of what I am. I believe you should not pay, you should pay very low costs. I believe you should buy index funds. I, be I believe you should match your tax advantage accounts. Jeremy is the exact opposite. He sells courses and he charges up to $20,000 for people to get access to his Discord, private coaching, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure he's lowered his prices, but I actually called his organization, Financial Fortress, and they quoted me for their highest tier up to $20,000. So he's charging people massive amounts of money. He's promising them or heavily implying that they can get massive returns, 30, 40, 50%, which is maybe possible every once in a while, but not every year consistently. And he's putting people into garbage stocks. As we've seen, most of his stocks have sold off 
just like Kathy Woods, because they're massively unprofitable, diluting the shareholders. And the only thing good about them is they have a cool story. So I've definitely been focusing my attention on him. He's not, he's indirectly responded to me, but I don't think he's going to come on my channel and debate me because I don't think he can hold up in a debate. I think Kevin can. I don't think Jeremy can. How, how did he indirectly contact you? So, so he hasn't contacted me. He's like referenced me. Like he's called me belly boy. Like I know he watches my channel. He's made videos talking, making fun of index funds. And he actually has this tracker. If you go to his videos and you click on his description, he has a tracker down there where he compares the ETF I invest in, the Vanguard Total World Stock Market Index ETF, the BT ETF. He's comparing my ETF to all of his stocks. And what he's doing is he's trying to show his fans that he's going to outperform me in the long run. But funny enough, he started the tracker after his stocks had already been decimated massively. So his thought was, well, my stocks already sold off massively, so I'm sure we'll enter some kind of bull market. But the funny thing is his stocks have dropped even more. So he's got that tracker there. And funny enough, I'm still winning. So hopefully that continues. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, uh, I had a video. I made a video. I think it was today or yesterday talking about why people don't want to go the index route why they want to go with individual stocks like, you know, Kathy Wood and things like that. And I came to the conclusion that because these lottery tickets give them hope, you know, they, they hate their job. They don't have any purpose in life. They want, they, they just are looking for hope. So people like Kevin, people like Jeremy, people like Kathy, they sell them hope. And, you know, they, they benefit tremendously from that because they get all these courses, sell them all these courses, coaching this and that, sell them hope. But unfortunately, over the last, you know, year, they decimated these people's financial lives, like permanently damaged their financial lives. I, I agree. I think it's disgusting what a lot of these people are doing. And I'm glad that I'm finally being proven correct to a certain extent, because I, I've been saying ever since I made my YouTube channel, most of these stocks are overvalued. You're not going to get rich quick. You're going to lose a lot of money if you keep buying all this trash that they're pumping on you. You probably shouldn't pay somebody $20,000 to teach you how to lose money. And it's starting to come to fruition. So I don't think I'll ever take over YouTube because people want to hear about individual stocks because it's fun. You can analyze them. Maybe you can make a lot of money. And the index, well, you're just going to get the returns of the index. It's not exciting. But in my opinion, and there's a lot of data supporting it, that's how you actually build wealth is you maximize your income, you cut your expenses, and you invest as much as you possibly can over your lifetime. And once you do that, you'll definitely, as long as you invest diligently, you'll definitely retire comfortably. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Warren Buffett has said so many times that index funds are the way to go uh, for most people, you know, and uh, I, I just, you know, understand from the, I understand the point of view of people that, you know, they, they are looking for hope and if they do index funds, even though it's responsible, that's the right way to do it. It's almost like giving up before trying. So I, I get that. I get that. But it, it, it hurts me to see, because I analyzed, you know, the stocks that Kevin, you know, invested in and I made a video about Kevin. Um. Uh, and I see what Jeremy is doing. I actually today, before I, um, I I jumped on the interview with you today, I went to the Target and I went to a grocery store. I wanted to look at the two chef products and I wanted to look at the Honest Company products. Um, and the Tattoo Chef, you know, he's telling his people on his YouTube channel that Tattoo Chef is dominating. And I went in there. And I asked an employee, hey, can you show me, you know, Tattooed Chef products? And, and I'm talking like an employee that knows what they're, not, not like some low-level employee that doesn't want to be there. And the guy looked at me, he's like, I don't even know this company. And, but then he finally found it, right, in the frozen, frozen uh, uh, food section, all the way on the bottom. Oh, he's like, oh, here is it on the bottom. Like, and it had like four products. And I'm, I'm like looking at this whole thing and I'm like, this is dominating. What, what are we dominating here? The bottom shelf, like nobody is going to see this product unless 
the only person buying this thing is when they already know about it. They're going there to get it. Nobody walking through the store would ever see that product ever. And this is what he's pushing these people. Yeah, I mean, Tattoo Chef is a fad because it's all he Jeremy likes to buy into stories. It's whatever's cool and exciting at the time. So he, he looks for a cool story and then he looks for temporary re revenue growth. That's what he did with Tesla. That's what he does with a lot of his companies. With Tattoo Chef, it's, oh, vegans are growing and the vegan market's going to explode and blah, 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 blah. That's why he's pushing Tattoo Chef. What he doesn't realize is a lot of vegan companies probably will go out of business. Only a few will probably stay around. Tattoo Chef, Tattoo Chef has 10% gross profit margin. 10%. It's all That's that is god awful. In the last earnings, they had two percent gross margin. Two. You're not talking. You're not talking about. We're not talking about net profit margin. We're talking about gross profit margin. It's like it's like selling a product for ten dollars and it costs you nine dollars to make it. That is completely <laughs> insane. Like like th that is just insane. Like what? You, you know what it is? It's like you're having a baby and you want your baby to be beautiful and educated. Like. I don't want a stupid and ugly baby to grow up. And that's what Tattoo Chef is. I don't fucking care if it's growing, okay? It's like, <laughs> it, it's an ugly baby from the beginning. Like, no, thank you. I don't want it. And dude, the uh, the price, so I, I've had the product a couple times because I made like review videos on it. It's this tiny little box. I think it's six inches by six inches. It has 300 calories. It's full of like salt and saturated fats. And they charge between five and six dollars for this tiny little bowl of bowl of food now if i was like into clean eating which i might eat pretty healthy but i'm not like fanatical about it i would probably go get fresh food and make my own meals instead of paying five or six dollars especially during inflationary times to buy a freaking tattooed chef product i mean it's a joke that this guy thinks this company is going to be huge but he keeps doubling down so yeah. we'll see what happens yeah. The, the, the Honest Company, I can see the appeal. So I went to the store, and they actually had a good shelf space. I went to Target. The, 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 the products were exposed. The products, the products are something that people need, and it's repeat business, right? Because it depletes, so you order it. I can see the appeal, you know? Uh, but it's a tough competition. Uh, Procter & Gamble, Kimberly, um, they have a better distribution better uh, better manufacturing facilities better uh, better bargaining power with with the retailers uh, the, the margins for Procter Gamble are like 51% uh, where margins for the honest company are only 34 so they're not enough to cover the operating expenses i can see the appeal why people think it's going to grow because even my girlfriend told me you know i would buy from honest company because i like the founder and and she has integrity and all that and you know i would buy from her so i'm like okay there's enough people that w would want to support that but until until they improve their margins i just don't see how they can ever be profitable yeah, I mean, that's my argument. It's like, why not wait until the company starts to become profitable? Because you can see companies like maybe they're losing money, but every quarter they're, they're coming closer and closer to profitability and eventually they turn profitable. At that point, maybe that's a good time to consider buying. But what Jeremy did is he bought it way back when it was massively unprofitable and he's been punished severely for it. Now, maybe one day I'll buy Honest. I don't know. But I'm not going to buy it right now when they're losing money hand over fist. I am more than happy to wait for a better opportunity. And there might even be a better opportunity at this point because the stock is sold off. I mean, I'm not buying it anytime soon because I don't see profitability. Yeah, well, and another problem that now the Honest Company has is that it's it's barely growing. Like, it's not a growth company anymore, or at least at this point. So it's like, if I have a growth company... I might be like, okay, you know what? It's growing. I can see the future potential. I'm going to give you a pass on the current profitability. Like, I can wait. But if you're not growing, then you better show me profits. Otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, that's the funniest part, part about Honest is they, they some of their segments are growing, but they got punished on one of their segments. I believe it was like, you know, you know the virus-related stuff, like all the wipes. That part of their business declined massively. Some parts of their business have grown a little bit, but even those parts of the business, they're not growing at such a pace that it would intrigue a growth investor. So it's really, it has nothing to it. it 
The revenue growth isn't that impressive. The margins are trash. There's just nothing that appeals to either a value investor or a growth investor with that company. I mean, maybe it'll change in the future, but right now I wouldn't touch it. You see, that's the thing. That's that's a very good point that you're saying because value investors for any company are usually the last ones that are going to support the stock, right? Because they're going to look at the, the, the balance sheet. They're going to look at the cash flow. And, and if it drops low enough, they're going to support it. But if you don't have any fundamentals, uh, who's going to bail you out? No one. <laughs> Absolutely nobody. And like I said, companies can go out of business. A lot of companies do go out of business. And even this company can go out of business. I don't know. But if one day it becomes profitable and it's growing, it's you know earnings per share and revenue, okay, maybe it's less likely to go out of business. And I can actually value it. It's a, it, That's a key thing. I can place a value on this company because I can project – how much they're going to make and how much I should pay for it to get a certain return. Yeah, that's right. I mean, look, look, look what, what what happened with Bill Ackman. He lost 400 million on Netflix and then he walked away simply because he couldn't value it. You know, it's like he, he has no visibility. So he's like, you know what? I'm stepping away. And and that's Netflix. You You can value Netflix much easier than some of the other ones. Yeah, I was really intrigued by him buying Netflix where he bought it at. I mean, I, I've looked at Netflix and I mean, yeah, it's profitable, but just because you're profitable doesn't mean you're getting a good deal. At the end of the day, you want to buy a company cheaply and collect a lot of cash flows. That's how you make your money. Looking at Netflix, I think it's still pretty expensive. I, I wouldn't buy it right now. I don't plan to. Which, and he bought it way higher than it is right now. So that was a very interesting trade by him. But hey, he yeah. got out of it. Yeah. All right. So the final question, uh, any any final thoughts that you might have uh, to leave my audience with about yourself or about your YouTube channel? Uh, I mean, just come check me out. So my channel, I mean, I like to clown around because uh, index funds are boring. There's nothing exciting about them. So I do some stock analysis. I talk about index funds. I like to go after grifters and scumbags. So that's what I like to do. So you can come check me out and uh, We'll have a good time together.